This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph. If this is your first time checking out the channel, I want to say hi. Thank you for taking a chance on the channel. I want you to stick through to the end of the video because you might learn a thing or two. And if you do, you can leave a like and let me know if you enjoy this kind of content so I can create more of them easily. And if you are a returning subscriber, if you're someone who has already been a part of this channel, I want again to say thank you so much for taking a chance on us and being a part of the family. And we are growing and the reason why we are growing is because of you. Also, just check out my digital store. I have a ton of presets on there. I also have my workflow retouching actions that's supposed to help anyone who doesn't have any idea on retouching the steps to take the kind of layers to create the kind of actions to run. It has everything done for you. So all you just do is one click and it's going to create all the layers that you need to retouch from blemishing all the way to color grading. It creates all the layers for you. Then also in that same action, I also have another set, which is for people who have like a good foundation in Photoshop, who want to choose, pick and choose actions to run, to run them at any time, to run them whenever they like. They also have another set of actions where they can choose to run them any point in time inside Photoshop, and it's going to work every single time. So check it out. Let me know how you feel about it in the comments if you do. All right, so moving on, this idea started in my head. So I was sketching this. I told you guys I draw sometimes. So I was just drawing and I just started to sketch this girl in an afro in a very nice looking dress and also with something waving in the background. So after I sketched it out, I was just looking at the things I have to see what I could use to pull this together. And I realized that I actually have a fabric, a velvet fabric, which is red and something that I could wave easily in the bottom half of the frame. And then when it came to thinking about how I'm gonna capture the images so that it becomes easy for me to cut it out in post-processing just so my work is easy and I can easily speed it up. I realized that using a white backdrop for this is going to be the best because it's going to give me the most contrast that I need between my subject and the backdrop as well. So the fabric is red and it's gonna contrast very well against the white and her hair is black, her dress is black, everything is really dark and you know black and white a stack contrast so it's going to be very easy for me to cut it out of the background that's why i choose white for this particular um, shoot i've said this before that skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and i meant it for example something i had to battle with for a very long time is managing money but because i worked in a bank which is actually a story for another day i was able to pick up a few pointers on how to manage money but this year, I'm making it a habit to learn more about money. And so I decided to search on Skillshare about that. And I found this video by Justin Bridges, who, by the way, is a photographer as well. And the video is Modern Money Habits, Five Steps to Build the Life You Want. And who doesn't want that? But you see, when you are young and vibrant and full of energy and you can move from project to project, it becomes and like and you see all this money rolling in, it becomes very easy for you to forget that your body isn't going to stay the same and you are not even going to stay the same. Luckily, Justin shows us how to save for retirement and there are lots of other smart money habits that I think every creator should know. I think it's about time we also live the life that we want and Skillshare is making it that much easy for us to do so. So if you're interested in joining Skillshare and becoming a member, then head on into my description box and use my special link. The first 1,000 of you, my friends, who click the link gets an amazing one month free trial of Skillshare. Now the good thing is you can use that one month free access to check out the video that I mentioned. And whilst you're there, you can also search for other classes about photography, creative writing, marketing, and productivity. And because Skillshare understands that you want to learn, there are absolutely no ads on the platform. And I believe this allows you to stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Thank you, Skillshare, for making this possible. All right, so we have our amazing 
Ejewa in the studio. <laughs> I like your hair, by the way. Awesome. And then we have Ampabing. You're supposed to be doing makeup. What are you doing holding this fabric? <laughs> well, anyway, we are short of hands. So, you know, the whole team is just ganging up to make sure we produce this awesome content. So if you, you know, find this video helpful, actually leave a like right now to show that you're supporting the channel and then we can start what we're doing. So as you saw in this sketch, what I wanted to achieve was just like a very beautiful girl in the center of the frame. And then what we're gonna do is just wave some fabric at the bottom here to create interest as red. But we can change the color in post to any other color that we want. And the reason why I'm also using a white uh, backdrop is because I will replace it with something interesting. I don't know yet, maybe like a sky or like I'll just play around and see what I can put there. So what we're going to be capturing today inside the camera is not going to be our final, final image. Now when it came to my camera and lens choice, I decided to use the 24 to 70 lens because that is what's going to give me a lot of range. I can easily just do like a 24 and get a very distorted feel if I want. And I can also zoom in all the way to 70 if I just want to get like a more compressed shot. So I think I was somewhere in between. And then I also went a little bit on the wider side, somewhere around 35 for the wider shot. And I, I was just playing with the zoom. And that's a, that's a good thing about having a lens that is as versatile as this because on set, you can just make creative decisions easily without having to stop the entire photo shoot, switch out your prime lenses. I just feel this just makes me work a little bit faster. Engage with the camera a bit yet. Chin up a little bit, perfect. Nice. Okay, so before we, let me just uh, mention the camera settings. I'm at um, 1 over 200 on the shutter speed, f2.8 and ISO 100. I'm also shooting with a 24 to 70 hard lens and I'm between 35 and 50. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to exaggerate the wave a little bit more and shooting at a wider angle is what's going to allow it to be more present in the frame. All right, so I'm probably, we're ready. Yeah, that's it, that's it, perfect. I've also gone a little further back so we can like have a wider frame. Ooh, that's nice, that's nice. Let's keep going, keep going. Let me just walk you through how I shot this. So because I wanted to again play with a little bit of color, I decided that her skin, I didn't want to just have like a natural skin in the shot. And what I decided to do is just play with the shadow parts a bit. So I knew that my main light, which is being modified with the umbrella, is going to spread light everywhere. So on my subject, it's going to spread light on the red fabric that I was waving at the bottom. It was even going to wash some light onto the backdrop to help increase the contrast. I just thought that the little bit of shadow that we're going to have in the frame, I want to have a hint of color in there. And even in post, I can decide to edit the colors or play with them a little bit more. Since I've already introduced a color, it will be easy for me to still play with more color in the shadow areas or even in her skin tones. It's something that I can decide and have full control of that in post-processing just because I prepared for it um, during the photo shoot process. So my gel light was just my 8200, the Godox 8200, which was being modified with a seven inch cone. And on that, I put two blue uh, gels on there and I just held it together or fastened it with a band. And that was just pointing a little bit at my subject and also like above towards the ceiling because I have white ceilings. I knew it was also going to wash down and fill the room, but I didn't want that color to be very, very, very prominent in the shot. I just wanted a hint of it. And so that power on that light was a little bit low. Then my main light, which is doing majority of the job, was my Explore 400 Pro TTL. And that was just modified with the umbrella and it was just washing light everywhere. So with all these two things said, all I had to now do is just capture images, just make sure that I'm probably is waving the fabric in very random ways so we can have a very dynamic movement in the fabric. And then also, I just had her also doing movements with her poses and capturing them as she's moving around just so we can have a lot of dynamic uh, poses and just make the shot very, very interesting. If we made her a little bit static, I felt it might have been boring. But I think everything just came together really nicely and and made us get a very interesting shot. Now for Aperture, I know that I wanted to have like a very soft feel in the image. I didn't want to shoot at a high aperture where I'm going to have almost everything in focus. I again wanted to increase how dynamic the image is going to look like by shooting at 2.8 which is very shallow or even the shallowest that the lens can go. And just so I can get like a little bit of um, 
blur in maybe the lower parts of the frame or a little bit of hair is going to be in focus and some parts of the dress are going to go out of focus. I just wanted to play with that depth in the image and then when I cut out the image as well, um, adding whatever interesting elements in the backdrop is also going to help elevate this. This is not a final part. We are going to jump onto part two when I'm doing the editing and then we'll both figure out like what way to go, what to do to make this image interesting. And you will see it when I'm doing that. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't subscribed, this is a chance for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on that video, including future videos that are yet to come as well. So yeah, um, this is basically everything that happened on set. Let me know how you feel about it, what you feel about even these raw images as well. I sometimes like to experiment like this with images such as these and hopefully inspire you to also explore and try new things. That's the only way we can improve our crafts. I'm beginning to enjoy these like studio shoots. It's always getting very, very interesting. And um, I love the fact that you can play with props and create things that, you know, didn't really exist just in your mind and then you bring it back into life and it looks so good. So yeah. This is the part one. Watch out for part two. Uh, subscribe so you don't miss it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. And remember, don't ever give up.